We have a box of parts here that I'm going to be using for this project. Uh, the main uh, item is these, uh, I think I have 10 um, balance. These are uh, from DigiKey and uh, they have an impedance ratio of 1 to 1. It's a CX2024 is the part number uh, from uh, the manufacturer. I got these from DigiKey and uh, the specs uh, as you can see in this um, spec sheet goes from 10 megahertz to 1000 megahertz with 50 to 750 being the main range and uh, looks like it's about a half a db uh, of loss over that range so that'll do for our purposes because we will only go down to about 135 megahertz with the dipoles that I have and up to 450 megahertz on the high end so that should do the job for us um, and uh, so let's take a look at what the circuit's going to look like uh, for the antenna. Oh, well, I should point out what else I have here, I suppose. I have this old ballon that we used before. It is deficient in the high end, and so uh, that may be partially due to the fact it has a UHF connector, so-called, here. I am going to do uh, an experiment to see if uh, using a B and C there will help that situation, but uh, and maybe this the size of this thing. It's a high power one, so uh, it, it may or may not work at 400 megs. Certainly does at two meters and probably at 220. And I have uh, this is the old antenna that was on, and that's the same basic construction we're going to use, except that we'll use the uh, the newer uh, ballon here, so there'll be concessions made to that. And these are the antennas I'm using. Uh, these are from Amazon. They cost uh, several dollars a piece. I don't remember exactly. And um, they seem to be a reasonable one. They extend out uh, to sufficient length to give me 135 megs on the low end and about 450 megs on the high end. So that's... Uh, their main claim to fame. The other thing is that the, these are brass on the end here, so uh, that allows us to solder it down fairly well. I tried screwing it down, but I found that was not very effective. And uh, of course they fold up, so you can fold it up like this when you're uh, not using it, which helps for storage purposes, or you can uh, uh, spread it out as required to make it into an antenna, and you can even make some impedance adjustment by doing some uh, bending of the thing intentionally. So that's uh, sort of the theory behind this whole thing. And we'll, uh, we'll be putting B and C's on. Um, I got this type. I would have preferred the flange type, but I don't happen to have those available in the local area conveniently. So I picked these up at uh, Fry's, I think. So that's what I'm going to try to use. If it creates a problem because of the length uh, of the uh, ground versus the length of the uh, center conductor here and trying to get that all to work together I may um, punt and go get a standard flange that we can uh, substitute for this but we'll try it with this first so that's what we're going to start with let's take a oh one, one last thing of course we've got some copper clad board here now this is the back side it's uh, uh, single sided course has a copper on this side and it's a uh, UL FR4 and uh, so it should be uh, good enough for this purpose and then I'll also have some um, PVC pipe that I'll use to put the uh, antenna on to uh, use in the field. We've seen this dipole in an earlier video I did and uh, the ballon on it is okay but it doesn't go up to 450 megahertz when I test it by uh, putting it together with the uh, return loss bridge here, I uh, put a load on the other end, a uh, little more detail on that shown here. So that's being used as a load, the uh, 30 dB attenuator. 
And uh, so we should have pretty good standing wave, but the reality is that our return loss is only good up to about 224 megahertz, and even there it's a little marginal. Uh, then it rises um, up to 400 and something megs, or 380 maybe, and then drops into the 400 meg region to a reasonable level, but uh, not that great. So that's what we're dealing with. It does work down, down at the low frequencies pretty well here. Um, we're uh, very good up to, uh, from 5 megs all the way to uh, 55 megahertz here. When I put a B and C connector on the, this ballon without, uh, you know, the same, everything is the same except for the uh, B and C, I'd expect to see a little better performance, and in some ways we do, but uh, actually it uh, goes up a little bit and, um, uh, and overall, but it's flatter, so... Um, I don't know, it's just, uh, unless I want to run power, um, which I may for EMI, I, this, this balance is not adequate. Um, while fooling around with this, I also put a HF ballon on here with a uh, resistor there that you can see. It's a 56 ohm resistor. It's got leads uh, that provide about 33 nanohenries of, uh, I calculated it out, and uh, in series with it. And according to the um, computer-aided design program here, I that shouldn't impact us up to the frequencies we're measuring here. Uh, this is the internal construction, and you see it's air-wound on a uh, core here. And uh, it uh, should cover from uh, 5 mega, well, 3 megahertz probably, up to about, uh, I think this is supposed to go to 6 meters, but it looks like it's a little marginal up in that area. I connected the uh, new 2024, um, CX2024 ballon up with a 51 ohm chip resistor on the right and uh, BNC on the left here. We're going to test this and see what its uh, return loss looks like. It looks like it's about uh, 23 dB at 50 megs, 146 is 16, 223 is 13 dB, and 440 is 10. That 13 and 10, eh, a little marginal, but we'll see what it looks like when it actually gets hooked up um, to an antenna. You've seen this uh, antenna before. This is the one I had used uh, in my former uh, uh, tree ties, and it has a ballon made by KLM, I think it was for the egg beater, that uh, I don't have anymore. And uh, I have modified it here to have the 51 ohm resistor over there on the left, and on the right hand side you see the BNC. So we're going to take a check on this and compare it to the uh, CX2024. The top line, the blue line, is uh, the power ballon. And as you see, it's about 5 dB worse all the way across, except uh, it's a little bit better actually at uh, 440, but uh, still what I'd co consider a bit marginal. And we'll see what it does on an antenna in a little while. Well, here, here's what it actually does on the antenna. It's actually pretty good. 14 dB from 215 to 230, 219 to 225 is 20 dB. So that's a pretty good match in anybody's book, I think. And uh, at the upper end, the best we can do at 250 megs is uh, like this. 250 is 22 and 23 at 253 and 262, I think it is, is uh, 14 dB. I have uh, the completed um, reference antenna here. And uh, as you can see, I've used uh, a BNC on it and a PC board that I just made by um, using an X-Acto blade and cutting and removing the pieces of the uh, foil. Get a little closer look at the uh, way that's put together here. Whoops, a little out of focus there. There we go. Alright, so uh, as you can see we have uh, the BNC here. We have the CX2024 here and uh, one of the monopoles here and one here to make a dipole. And uh, everything soldered together with the uh, surface mount. Uh, well, it's not really surface mount, it's a component on a, a chip uh, 
or a board. But anyway, uh, it's all put together. In the uh, middle here, there's a uh, a pad that is one side of the ballon and and the center conductor of the, uh, the B and C here, and the uh, other side is uh, to the ground here, uh, and the ground side of the uh, of the ballon unit. And this ballon side is just goes to each antenna, with as short a leads as I can make it. I just squeak by with uh, around 440 megahertz uh, when the things all collapse down. So we just barely make uh, that goal, but uh, we don't make it to 450 uh, very well. Eh, it has some resonance there, but uh, it's really on the edge of the resonance. We'll check that out when we test this in the field, of course. But anyway, that's uh, basically what we're testing in the following segment. And now we view the results. At 146 we're doing about 21 dB. At 222 we're doing about 21 dB. At 440 we're doing 14 dB, although at 430 it's better than 14 dB, maybe almost 20. And at 441 the overtone of the 2 meter length gives us about 13, 14 dB, and uh, better than, um, oh, looks like 18 at the th its third harmonic, uh, which is, uh, again, 441. Uh, it's related to the 146 length. So there you go.